Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to the state of Michigan in America once again and this is going to be another brewery who I've never tried anything from but they are one of the bigger producers of the state. So we're going to go to Bel Air and Elk Rapids in Antrim County which is on the northern, the northern part of the southern peninsula if I'm saying that correctly and we're going to do my first review from Shorts Brewing Company who I've heard very good things about. So for this one we're having a taste of the Cat's Pajamas which is a double IPA brewed with blood orange and guava. It comes in at 9% ABV and you know it should be pretty nice. This was a beer of course that was recommended to me by Balder and Karsten over at Kiosk in Copenhagen. They get some really random American beers over there and as I always say it is cool to try different things from different parts of the country. There's so many different craft breweries of course but this is only the third one I'm looking at from Michigan. I've done one from Greenbush Brewery and all the rest of them have been founders reviews. I do need to check out Bell of course but um, there's quite a thriving beer scene over there in Michigan these days I believe it's 200 different craft breweries that they have and uh, of course a shout out to one of my long-term subscribers Jesse who is from that area hops the drinker so you might see him commenting on this video but as I say it's always cool to try new American beers and I hope you guys watching over there enjoy my take on this beer so uh, anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below Low brewery website links to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Shorts Brewing Company. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, of course, there's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, of course, and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Shorts Brewing Company then. So Shorts Brewing were founded back in 2002 by Joe Short and they're based in Bel Air in Michigan. So he started the company at only 22 years old but he had considerable experience from brewing for other companies throughout the state. And uh, it's quite an interesting story of how they started this up. So they opened their brew pub back in 2004 which had formerly been a hardware store and it was the building was over a hundred years old and Joe estimated that a $30,000 kind of bank loan or whatever would be enough to finance this brewery and be able to do it in three months but it turned into a far longer process and I think he said it was $180,000 they spent on this building with uh, an 18 month Kind of an 18 month build time so it took them a lot longer to establish than they thought but um, they, in their first year they set up and they produced 178 barrels of beer but initially the brewery were just producing very very small batches to serve in the pub so they produced a huge number of different beers and if you look at their rate beer page today as of mid May 2017 they've got 480 different beers registered on there which is really quite impressive actually but in 2008 they purchased an old factory in Elk Rapids to convert and they established this as a production brewery to accommodate their larger batch beers that they wanted to export. So these were the first batches were produced there in January of 2009 and this means that their brewing capacity now exceeds 30,000 barrels of beer per year. And I think they've just, re they've just reached 35,000 barrels of beer per year as well and uh, as I, I think most of their beers are just available in the usual surrounding states. I think it's quite unusual that I was able to find this one over here in Europe. But interestingly as well in 2013 these guys also set the record for the world's largest tap takeover so they did this when they served 100 draft beers at the Hopcat Brewery in East Lansing in Michigan as well so some really interesting points about this brewery they really are very prolific if you want to try some of the more random beers I guess you've got to go to Bel Air and check out their pub hopefully I can do that sometime Michigan is a state that I still need to visit for myself uh, but yeah hopefully that's something for the future and of course I guess you can go and check out the production brewery if you want as well but another really interesting brewery from Michigan and uh, we'll get on to the tasting then so I hope enjoyed a little bit of history and uh, yeah there's not much more to say about this beer other than as I mentioned at the start of the video it's a double IPA uh, which is 9% in alcohol and it's blued with orange and guava blood orange and guava so there you can see some of the nice shorts artwork on this one shorts brew on the side of course uh, 12 fluid ounces this one America of course still refuses to adopt the metric system which makes sense for everybody else I think it's only Burma and one other country that don't use the metric system but there you can see the uh, the the shorts brew bottle cap on this one really quite nicely presented beer I do like this kind of style of artwork that they have it's quite a kind of classic American style craft brew but yeah really nicely presented 
So without further ado then, we'll get this guy open and we'll get on with the, with the tasting then. So yeah, nice smoky opening there and you can smell the guava coming off that right away. It's almost got a little bit of a tangerine note as well, which I guess will be the blood orange. I always thought the blood orange came across a little bit sharper than tangerines right enough, but I may well be wrong there. But yeah, as you can see, this beer's poured a really nice, bright, orangey amber colour. It's maybe slightly coppery actually, but it looks very, very nice. I'll just let you have a little quick look at the bottle cap again. Maybe I wasn't, I was a bit too quick with that, but you can see the shorts on there. It's quite a nice uh, aroma, that, uh, quite a nice bottle cap, that one. My brain's not working today. But as you can see, a really nice kind of coppery orange colour. There's a solid finger of a creamy, uh, yeah, creamy coloured head. This one very, very slightly based. There's, there's one or two big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass and a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the... Uh, of the head there, but you can see if I put my fingers behind the glass, the beer does have quite a bit of haze to it, it is slightly opaque, but overall it looks really nice and it's kind of the sort of colour range you would expect for an IPA or a double IPA, so we'll have a closer look at the aroma then. Oh yeah, that aroma hits the spot for me. If you've watched my channel before, you will know that I absolutely love orange IPAs, you know the Amarillo and the Mosaic Hop are some of my favourites. And of course you've got Pacifica from New Zealand as well, but the orange just kind of jumps out of this one at you. And you can smell a little bit of the guava in there as well, but for me it's the orange that's dominating, I think. The guava is just a nice kind of lighter tropical fruit. Maybe that's why I was getting the impression of tangerines, of course, a little bit when, um, when I opened it up, because the guava is just a little bit of a lighter and more mild smelling fruit from what I remember. But yeah, it's these big juicy fruits that are kind of coming out of it already. There's a little bit more complexity to the fruity note as well. You can smell a little bit of a kind of peachy, apricoty sort of thing going on with this one. Yeah, so there must be like some citra or mosaic hop in there as well to kind of complement that. There is a little bit more complexity in there. There's maybe a sort of, yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of lychee or gooseberry thing going on underneath that. Maybe a wee bit of a and almost a sort of mango or papaya kind of thing in there too. So there's a little bit more complexity to the fruits than you might initially think. A little bit of a sort of floral aromaticity to the beer as well, but you can smell a nice kind of rich kind of caramel biscuity base in this one. There's a little bit of bready character as well. So it kind of has everything that you'd expect of a double IPA. You can't smell the booziness so much in this one, but there is a nice sort of caramelly biscuit and very, yeah, slightly brown bready base actually. On second thought, it does come across as kind of brown bready rather than, uh, than a white bready base on this one. But as I say, it has everything you'd expect from this particular style. So yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and mull over the aroma of the beer before you actually try it. That's always half the experience with things like craft beer and whiskey. But we'll get stuck into this one now. So this one is the Cat's Pajamas from Shorts Brew based in Elk Rapids and uh, also in Bel Air in Michigan. So the fresh beer of Bel Air. Scott. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's considerably more hoppy than I was expecting actually. I thought that this one would be, that the fruits would come out a little bit more juicy in this. As I always say, the key difference when it comes to fruit flavours, the way you can always tell if there's fruit added to the brew, around the very edge of your tongue, where you'll get usually the, the hoppy bitterness, you can just get that extra juicy fruity character around there. And that's how you can always tell. If the fruit is extracted, if the fruit flavours are coming from the, the hop characters, you'll get it on just behind the front curve of your tongue. But if it's coming from a fruit addition, it always comes out on the edge of your palate, at least for me. As I always say, the beer is subjective and you might perceive it differently. But that's a really quite nice beer. I do like how this one comes across. You know, in terms of IBUs and stuff, it's not going to absolutely blow your head. From what I understand, this beer, I think it had an 80 on rate beer. So it's not one of their better rated beers in general. And it's not actually one of their better rated IPAs. But I mean, it comes across as a nice beer. And that's what they want to do, of course. They produce a whole load of different things. And they just like to experiment. And, uh, you know, if they can produce beers like this just as a sort of experiment, I think this is one of their smaller batch ones when I looked it up on the website. It is quite impressive that they can produce things that are this nice and, uh, and drinkable. So, yeah, thumbs up to Shorts Brewing for this one. I will need to try probably one of their more kind of highly rated and regular beers at some other point, though. Yeah. 
but this one itself is really nice. It's a big, it's quite a fruity and juicy IPA, but like I said at the start, when I first took it in, it does have a little bit more bitterness to it than I was expecting. So, in the middle of the palette, this one, you've kind of got what you'd expect. There's a nice, slightly pale malt, malt base in this one. There's a little bit of thicker bready character on top of that. There's almost a wee bit of a kind of spicy note coming out from the malts as well for me. I can feel that right in the middle of my tongue. Maybe there's a little bit of slightly biscuity caramel sweetness right in the middle of the palate too, but for me the malt base comes across really as more of a bready thing. But it's certainly a really quite nice beer this one. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. I'll say that straight away. In terms of the hoppy side of this beer, in the back corners of the palate there's a very, very slight earthiness to it, but as you come further forward along the sides of your palate, you get more of that sort of floral, aromatic kind of thing coming out. For me, it's not really pine resins I'm getting on this one, it's more of a sort of spicy floral aromaticity actually. And yeah, as you go round the front curve of the palate, you get that slightly lighter, more grassy hop character coming out of it. But you can feel that wet, juicy feel around the very edge of your tongue. And that's where these kind of blood oranges and guavas are coming out. The, the blood oranges coming out is this, it's a slightly sharper orange I find than, than regular oranges, of course, and tangerines and mandarins, mandarins as well. So the blood orange to me comes out just a little bit kind of sweeter and uh, sharper than that. So it's quite a sharp orangey citrus character, but it's nowhere near, of course, as sharp as you'd expect from like a sour beer or something. And yeah, the guava starts to come out a little bit further around the curve of your tongue. You just feel that slightly lighter, more tropical note coming out of the, the beer a little bit later on. There is a bit, of, a considerable bit of complexity to the, the hop oils in this one too, so if you just go behind the front curve of your palate, that's where you'll get that little oily bubble where these nice kind of juicy fruity esters come out. To me there's a bit of grapefruit just underpinning this one. There's maybe a little bit of passion fruit as well at a later point, but I think it's mainly grapefruit that's coming out of this one, and you do get a little bit of these more kind of complex uh, tropical fruit esters coming out of this one as well. So there is a little bit of a sort of, I think it's a little bit of papaya character and that matches of course well with the way that the, uh, the, the guava comes out of the beer. There's a little bit of an almost lemon limey thing and gooseberry note to it as well, but the lingering flavours for me in this beer are probably the slightly spicy floral aromaticity and a bit of that kind of grapefruit as well. There is a wee bit of graininess and breadiness from the malt base too. The oranges and guava come in quite, they, they come in quite sharply but then they disappear fairly quickly actually. There's a little tiny bit of that sharpness from the orange remaining but the guava for me does disappear a little bit. Yeah, I would stick with that. It kind of lingers around and then just starts to disappear. A little bit of the sharpness from the orange and then further back you get a little bit from that, from that guava flavour, but really it's the, the spicy floral character and the grapefruit from the hop oils that's lingering in this one. But overall, it's a nice beer. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. And when this one, you know, as I say, when they can produce this as a sort of small batch experimental beer, just kind of on a whim, I guess, it would be really cool to try one of their higher rated beers and see how that one comes across. But this one, certainly on its own, is really quite nice. So a thumbs up to... Uh, to, uh, to to Shores Brewing Company in Elk Rapids. They've done a good job with this one. My brain's just not working tonight, of course. Um, but in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer, I would say this guy is mid-bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth. The mouthfeel is quite oily. It does feel a little bit oilier, more oily and wet. The fruity, juicy character gives it a little bit of wetness on the edge of the tongue. I would say that. There's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness. The malt base actually has a little bit of dryness to it as well from the... Uh, the slightly almost cereally kind of spicy sort of thing that's going on in there, but there's a good bit of juicy fruitiness to this as well, and you've got a little bit of dark kind of bitterness from the grapefruit as well. But like I said, overall, Shorts have done a really nice job with this one, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. So yeah, the Cat's Pajamas from Shorts Brewing Company in uh, Bel Air 
in uh, Michigan. So really nice beer this one. It comes still slick in there as a lovely nice colour. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer. It's been really cool to review another one from the state of Michigan for you guys. Do let me know some of the other craft breweries that I should check out from there and I'll see if the guys in Kiosk in Copenhagen can get some of these. But yeah, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Thank you once again for watching. Let me know what other beers I should look out for from Shortsbury. Probably something that's in more of their regular range I'd like to try next time. I know they've got some good Imperial Stouts and Imperial Porters as well, so hopefully I can review some of those. But until the next time, it's Lange just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Please do consider subscribing to the channel, and do check out all my usual social media, and hopefully I can catch you very soon with some more short beer reviews, and also some others from the state of Michigan. Until the next time, it's Lange just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Cheers.